right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for everyone to get buzzed on the evening buzz. My name is Paul Sharon, and I'm coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, my crazy partner over there. Yes, Rod Davidson here, coming at you from Fresno, California. And uh, welcome to the tenth episode of the Evening Buzz. And tonight we are going to be talking about uh, what are we talking about? Globalization. Absolutely, it's going to be like a little bit of a lesson in uh, both globalization and, I guess, perspective. Because globalization is really a, that's going to be a tough word for me to try to say all night. Let me tell you. And uh, globalization can be good or bad depending on your perspectives. So. It's really a lesson in both both of those things. Uh, some people see globalization as a good thing, and some people may see it as a bad thing. Now, when uh, we're talking about globalization, of course, we're talking about it from a business financial aspect, uh, Rod. We're not going to get into the whole uh, interconnectedness of the planet as far as... Uh, you know, how much resources we're using up and uh, global warming and all of those things we won't uh, we won't get into that that's a, a subject that uh, I don't even want to go near because it's so polarized and people are so crazy about the planet and you should be I guess I mean I guess we, we should be worried about the rainforest and all that kind of stuff but we're gonna avoid any rainforest topic tonight as far as I know especially anybody from California because this is like the driest year in 500 some years I think <laughs> That's so, right. You guys are not in 500 years. Have they actually been tracking it that long? Well, I don't know if they've been tracking it. I saw something about that today, but it's <clears> uh, <throat> yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, the farmers are going to be the farmers are definitely going to be crying this summer. I think because there's there hasn't been any water. There's not even much snow in the mountains. I mean, that's where most of the water comes from anyway. Right. I heard that. I heard that. So you know what that means, though. And I mean, I guess this is more along the lines of global warming, but. What that means is that if uh, you guys have drought there and crops aren't good, that means all of our food prices are going to go up. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And what's, that's, what's big there? What's big in Fresno? What do you guys? Uh, what do you guys give us? Oh, I mean, you name what are it. The big crops. Um, I mean, grapes and raisins are probably the biggest thing in the valley. But I mean, there's you know. Pretty much, there's everything here. I mean, there's oranges, there's peaches and nectarines, there's almonds, there's pistachios, there's grapes, there's raisins, there's there's corn, there's, I mean. Wow. Yeah. You guys do a lot there in Fresno. I didn't know that. I thought you were just a sleepy little town that nothing happened there. But uh, if you guys give us all that stuff, any of you folks that like any of those things he just mentioned, you better go stock up because next year they're going to be a lot more money the crops are going to suck with no yeah. So anyway, going back to the globalization, I guess it really depends if you have the mentality of uh, of the space being crowded or you believe in abundance. That's really, I guess, the bottom line, right? <laughs> well, absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's part of it. But, uh, you know, what we'll do tonight was, is we're going to play devil's advocate, I guess, or, or one of us will play devil's advocate and the other one will play... Uh, I don't know. I'm going to play the, the poor woe is me employee, I guess. And um, because that's what we're talking really? about. Really? I, I don't know if you know how to play that. I have not done that in a long time. So <laughs> I, I will take a stretch. I can see an Academy Award coming on tonight as, as <laughs> I play the employee, but we'll see. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the. Uh, We've got good news and we've got bad news thing, and hopefully that uh, out of that will come some uh, some good stuff and some bad stuff. But we'll have Rod play the entrepreneur and, and get his perspective on things, and then I will play the employee. So, as an entrepreneur, Rod, what would be what would be the good news about globalization as an entrepreneur? Well, I mean, you know, you're you have the whole world at your fingertips to market to, to sell stuff to, to, you know, talk to whatever the case, whatever business you're in. The global global world is, you know, out there for anybody's taking, I guess. 
Right, right. So as, as an employee, I mean, that's kind of not a bad thing because, uh, let me see, as me as an employee, if I know that the company can reach people all over the planet, well, they're going to be able to maybe have cheaper prices. So that might not be too bad of a thing. But um, Well, that depends on the type of job you're doing. Right. That, that is true. That is true. So what would be the bad news for you as an entrepreneur, though? Well, everybody can market to the global scale, but you know, if you right. believe in abundance, you know, then you're okay. I mean, there's competition when, when you're talking about competition on the global scale. I mean, there's a lot of people out there, so I think there's room for there's room for everybody. So this this goes along the lines of uh, what we uh, what we hear Gary Vaynerchuk say when he says uh, it's never a, a bad time to start a business unless you're going to start a mediocre business. So Today, absolutely, <laughs> we're on a global scale. Then, and you start a company and and or a business, it better be a good one. Absolutely, right? Yep. So, let's look at some more good news about you as an entrepreneur. What's another reason? If being able to, and I guess this is also a talk on the internet because, boy, the internet has changed. So since Al Gore didn't Al Gore say he invented the internet? Since Al Gore invented the internet, we've been interconnected really all over the entire globe. Now I remember back it wasn't that long ago, it was probably early nineties. I remember booking airlines and, and you could go online and, and you know, it was just kind of dots and dashes at the time and, and there was um, you know, I think it was MS DOS maybe even and you could just type away and it would go go off, and you could you could book your airlines that way. And now that was just like a local thing, but now you can do that literally all over the globe. The internet has almost every household connected from here to Australia and back. So, yeah, absolutely. It's funny um, you mention Australia, by the way. Why is that? Well, because I have a good friend of mine that lives in Australia, I was just chatting with last night on, on uh, Facebook. So that kind of proves your point, I guess. It proves the point, right? <laughs> so at one time they were here, now they're there. Absolutely. So you guys can actually um, connect with the planet. So as an entrepreneur, what does that allow you to do? Well, it'd probably be easier to say what it wouldn't allow you to do. <laughs> <laughs> which I'm not thinking about too many, but, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, globally with everybody connected, I mean, it just kind of comes back to that same thing where you have the opportunity to talk to, build relationships with people that you would not ordinarily ever meet, um, market to those people. I mean, you know, there it's there's really no no cap to that, I think. Well, wait a minute, then. If you can talk to people all over the planet, let me see. Are, of course, you know, you, there is a language barrier in some areas, obviously. <laughs> sure, but for the most part, you know, the, we, we see it all the time with, uh, with uh, you know, the call centers for Dell and all these kind of stuff, you know. Sure. They have that Indian accent, and the guy's name is Steve. So we see that. So, so what you're saying then is that you are able to outsource all over the planet as well. That is absolutely correct. For a third of the cost it would normally cost you here in the wonderful United States, which is kind of unfortunate because that's why a lot of these employees in the U.S. are becoming unemployed because companies are outsourcing all of their work to cheaper areas. Right. So I guess See, that's, so now, that's the bad and the good at the same time. It's bad for employees. Me. Good for me. me as an employee, yeah, that's not a good thing for me as an employee because I can, I, I'm not only not a, I, am I competing with Bob down the street here for that same job? I'm competing with, with uh, somebody that may live in Australia or someone that may live in the Philippines or India, for example. Yeah, I mean, that's it's, not, it's much, not it's much worse for the employee as it is than it is for the employer because then they can capitalize on those cheaper wages. Right, right. So that's not that's not really good for me. Now I guess the good news for me would be that I could also take advantage of being outsourced all over the world, but that I guess still means that my labor rate as a whole 
is probably affected by that. So that's probably, again, as an employee, not a good thing. So a lot of this globalization thing seems to work more, uh, more in favor of an entrepreneur or a business owner than it does for the employee. So that's that's definitely not good for me as a uh, as an employer or as yeah, an employee. You, you got to get out of that employee job, man, and become an entrepreneur. Yeah, I'm competing with people all over the planet. That's uh, that doesn't sound like a like a great thing for me, really. And besides, as an employee, as an employee, you pay more taxes than anybody anyway. Right, right. Yeah, that's probably not a good thing. So, it's it's not all bad, guys. I mean, there's there's obviously there's certain jobs or certain things. Rod and I talked about this before coming online. There's certain things that you're you're never going to be outsourced uh, if you're in the medical field, right, Rod? I mean. Pretty hard to outsource. Maybe a doctor or a nurse. Those jobs are obviously going to probably stay local, I would think, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, and I was actually in the medical field for a long time myself, and um, I don't remember. It was probably a good five or six years ago. It was actually there was such a shortage of nurses. I mean, they were they were bringing in nurses from all over the place just to be able to cover it, and because there was. Um, a real big shortage because you know they've changed they changed the you know they changed the um, the rate basically between how many nurses can care for so many patients and whatnot and it really created a a shortage but um, but yeah I mean you know when you have cases like that occasionally it just doesn't last long because that was only about a two to three year period and you know, most of the schools and stuff pumped up their programs, and now they've got more nurses than they know what to do with now. So it's, uh, you know, that's you know that's the other side of things, I guess. Sometimes is the sometimes the um, schools and whatnot like that that uh, are doing these programs, they don't really know, they really don't know how to uh, manage that to create you know the right. right amount of people in the in the industry and then they flood the market and then you, you're back to these educated people that are working for eight dollars an hour at McDonald's because there's no jobs for them so right right and that's that's not only part of just boy does that ever open up just a can of worms for me because <laughs> you, know, you know me and our, our education system and that's you know, our education system is a huge part of the problem, but, but globalization kind of even adds into that. And, and we'll, I'll tell you a quick story that uh, what happened to, to me and Marty, my buddy Marty, we were at uh, Applebee's one day. And again, we don't know everybody's situation. So we don't know, you know, maybe somebody's shy and that's why they don't get a job or that they don't interview well. And that's why they don't get a job. But this, uh, this waitress was talking to us about her boyfriend. Who had just graduated out of a, and I think a three-year law degree, for some reason, not not a four-year, but regardless, three or four-year. I looked it up at one point, and saw that a law degree will basically cost you from a decent school around around 150 thousand. Now, again, don't be flooding me with email saying it's 132 thousand or 165 thousand. It's somewhere around in there. The number really is irrelevant, but. Her boyfriend had just graduated with a law degree, and I don't know if he'd passed the bar yet. And to me, it's just a weird deal that if, if he's passed the bar, that he would be able to find a law a, a job in some kind of law firm. But uh, he was working at Enterprise Rent a Car. Uh, he was a he was a desk clerk at Rent Enterprise Rent a Car. And now, good thing that he's got a job. You know, I'm happy for him that he's got a job. But man, if if I just spent one hundred and fifty thousand dollars on my education. I would be wanting to be in that field where I'm making that money back, or at least trying to make that money back, not be in a position where I'm working at Enterprise. Now, I also researched that to find out, well, how many attorneys do they graduate every year from law schools in the United States? And it's 40,000, or over 40,000. So every year... Every this, year? Every year in this country... They graduate oh, 40,000 oh. people from various law programs all over the country. I don't know about there's you. No wonder but... there's so many lawsuits going on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like we need more of those guys. You know, what, what's a joke? What do you call 5,000 lawyers at the bottom of the ocean? A good start. Um, it's, it's, uh, it, it's incredible to me that, like you said, with the nursing, 
is that the school system sees a this you know this need for a, a particular uh, field or a particular profession, and they just flood the market with that with those people, and then all of a sudden that that flood can't it can't stay, sustain itself, and eventually you're going to run out of jobs in that particular field. You can't just keep pumping people in there and expect there to be job openings. I mean, you know, as an attorney, it's not like a football player where you're in playing for four years and you're out. You know, you could be an attorney until you're 60 or 70, and I would probably think that as an attorney, the older you get, the more experienced you are, the more, you know, life experience you have, you probably become a better attorney. So a little bit of a, a rant on the education system, but not only are you competing with those 40,000 people that graduated here in the U.S., as you and I both know, we, we work with, um, when we're doing uh, certain projects, we, we use Odesk or we use Elance. And now I can hire someone who works or, or speaks English for one and works out of India or the Philippines or somewhere that can do research for me for, like you said earlier, a third of the price, right? Yeah, or even less. I mean, some of those places, you know, for that type of skill, like the Philippines, you know, as an example, I mean, 2 to $3 an hour is good money for them. Right. I mean, that's like a 20 or $30 an hour for us. Right. And, and Ron and I were looking earlier online, we were looking at Odesk and Elance for some of the, the legal profession on there because we wanted – you know, we want to know that what we're saying and what we're, the information we're giving you guys is correct. And you'll see a lot of attorneys and uh, people with law degrees on on there looking for $100, $125 an hour. We saw as much as $200 an hour. And I'm sure that you'll find those in those other areas as well. But we saw people on there with, with law degrees, folks, with law degrees looking for $25 an hour work. Yeah, and that, and had, that, that, was, that particular one had 16 years' experience. Right, and that was here in the U.S. <laughs> now, outside of the U.S., it went down as little as 15 to $16 an hour for people with law experience. Now, as we talked about before, coming from me as an employee, if I'm a 49-year-old, <clears throat> about to turn 50, uh, guy, and I go back to school to try and get my law degree or whatever it is to try and bump my education and get a job for me that is it, it's really a waste of a waste of time and money it just is because I am not going to be able to compete with one all those people that are a lot younger than me and that went through all the school that have and I'm not going to spend all that extra money on that education and then just be able to get 15 16 20 bucks an hour so for me as an employee bad thing but for you Rod as the employer as the entrepreneur it's great for you, right? Let's say you wanted to start a law firm. How would you do that? You go out. I have no the... idea. I would never know how to start a law firm, but <laughs> but yeah, I no, mean, you... if I wanted to invest in a law firm, yeah, you could go on there and you could actually build a practice based on outsourced, you know, people. Absolutely, and that's exactly what I was talking about. You could hire. Obviously, you got to have somebody to, to go to court, right? So you have a couple of guys here locally to do the court stuff. But literally, all your researchers, all of that other stuff that is uh, that requires you to have a law degree so that you know to be a legal researcher or whatever they call them, I don't know anything about that. And that's really where come. most people, that's in the attorney field, that's where most people pay most of the money. Is the, It's not when they're going to court because that's pretty short-lived unless it's a big, long, drawn-out criminal trial or something. But generally, it's all the research, it's all the uh, depositions, it's all that stuff that you know, is all the high cost, so you can do all that, you right. know, with, work, with remote services. And yep. it's the same in the, the law field. It's the same in the accounting industry. There was CPAs on there uh, from all over the country for as little as $10 an hour for CPAs. And, yeah, there was there was higher, and, you know, some of them may get that. But but if if I know that someone can do that job, for a half or a third, and and Rod, you know, you know, I'm a pro, I'm a pro American guy. I was born in Canada, but I, I, you know, I'm an American now, as hardcore as ever. I drive an American automobile. My wife drives an American automobile. I, you know, I ride a Harley Davidson. I try to do everything American. 
Obviously, electronics is pretty much impossible, so so we don't do that on electronics. But I really try to do the buy American thing as much as possible. But I'm also a business guy. I'm also uh, an entrepreneur, and I cannot fault anybody for trying to make a living by outsourcing their labor and trying to get a better price. I know people freak out about that, and, and if you guys are watching and you're you know, in middle America and you're, you know, pro-American labor force and all that kind of stuff, I, I feel you, man. I feel you, but you have to understand from on from an entrepreneur's point of view. And by the way, Rod, Rod's the entrepreneur in this thing today. I'm just an employee. So you guys get mad at Rod, sent him emails. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, send me emails. If I were Rod, I would tell outsource and do whatever I could to make the most amount of money for my company. That's what you guys have to understand. Don't get so angry that that these uh, people use outsourcers because I used to I used to get angry and when I saw that happening. Well, why aren't they hiring American workers? Why? Because it costs too much money. And why, with globalization being the way it is, and, and the internet interconnecting everybody on the planet, why would you not? Why would you not outsource? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, with all the competition nowadays, and there's so many, you know, I'll I'll kind of go back to healthcare as a really good example. Um, you know, the amount of regulations that they put that they're putting on healthcare in the last, you know, five mm -hmm. to ten years, yeah, especially. Absolutely. I mean, you you have to do so much more work, and you really can't afford to hire more people, so. That's why they are starting. You were really seeing a trend in healthcare of outsourcing every single service that is not direct patient care related. Right. You know, right, and right. It, and it's sad, but it's reality. You know, it's uh, you know, when you have to put, you know, when you have to get, you still have to get that work done, and you need more people to do it. You got to cut, you got to cut the labor in order to get it done. So that's uh, you're really seeing a huge trend, especially in healthcare. There. Outsourcing billing services and you know housekeeping services and dietary services and you know every service that's really not direct patient care related. It's pretty sad, but right. it's, it is what it is, you know. Right, and that's what we talked about earlier. There's some some things like you like that that cannot be outsourced. Direct patient care. Uh, someone who walks into the courtroom. Um, obviously, someone who. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's why these jobs are getting so big. But someone who's serving you at the fast food restaurant. But here's an interest. Here is a really, really interesting thing that I heard the other day. And I think it was McDonald's. You actually pull up to a drive-through, and the speaker's there, the camera is there, and you are getting your order taken at a drive-through in California by a person who is in a call center somewhere in middle of America. And why really? do they do that? Because they can pay them. Yeah, you're, you're seeing the people, and I can't remember who was talking about this, but you can see the people inside, but you're not talking to them. You're talking to somebody in a call center in middle of America. Why? Because they can pay them 20, 30, 40 cents an hour less or more in McDonald's. In, and, I, and I hate to pick on McDonald's if it isn't them, if it's KFC or whoever, but the point of the matter is, you're getting your order taken. They go, yes, sir, drive up to the next window. And you drive up to the next window. Somebody takes your money now. But the person who took your order is in a call center somewhere. And he might be not only working that drive through he might be working, and at least in my head from what I'm understanding about it, he might be working five different drive throughs Now think about that when I can do that here. How long do you think it's going to be before that goes over to India or to the Philippines or to wherever, China, wherever they can get cheaper labor rates. When do you think that's coming? So well, I hate to be if, a bummer. Yeah, What's I mean, if they, can, if they can actually get that to actually work and it's successful, that's going to be a pretty big, uh, that's going to be a huge cost savings for them, no question. Huge cost savings for them. So we hate to be such a huge downer here, guys, but but the light, the silver lining here is that you can make use of that as well. You have that ability to outsource, not only outsource 
to all over other people all over the world to, to find better labor costs and stuff for your businesses when when it comes to call centers or things like that or or design or internet work or whatever it is. Uh, if you're building a, a, in any kind of network marketing business through webinars like this, we could have people. Not likely we have everybody on tonight, but we could have people watching from Australia, from China, from anywhere in the world. You can connect with those people. So if you're in the network marketing industry, you are able to connect face to face with people all over the planet. There's no excuse for you not to be able to take advantage of the technology that's available to us here. And um, what, is, just, what is the one thing that caused all of this ability to uh, connect all of these countries into remote support and outsourcing and all that? Al Gore invented the internet. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the government technically invented it way back in 1960-something, but uh, it, it wasn't called the internet because it was mainly for the government. But... Uh, there was actually right. an internet type of service back in the 60s. Right, I know people bug Al Gore about that, but I, what what was the answer to your question? <laughs> internet. How did all this happen? <laughs> the internet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The internet. And one one quick thing too, when we're talking about the outsourcing, Lorena the other day was telling us my my wife, and she's sitting here next next to me, so she'll correct me if I'm wrong. She was basically telling me that uh, that the company she used to work for. Am I allowed to say their name? No. Company that she used to work for. It's a very big company with two letters in its name. <laughs> and and anyways, that, that's good enough. That's all I'll say. And they could hire one person in the U.S. They could hire eight people in Mexico for the same amount. Yeah. And for every one person in the U.S., they could hire... 20 to 25 people in India. So it, it's a real it's a real thing, and as much as I hate to admit it, I, I, I can't fault them for that because it's what it, what they need to do to, to cut the cost for their company, and they've got their shareholders and and you know all those people that they have to account for and and you know show profit to. So hey, what what can you do? You know, it's it's just it's just business, but Again, just like taxation, how we always say, don't get mad about people not paying the percentage of taxes that you do. Figure out how they do that and do the same thing. Same thing here, guys and gals. The opportunity is also available to you to use the Internet, to use this amazing technology that we have to connect with people all over the planet and, and build a business for yourself and build an income for yourself in, a, in some kind of home-based business that it's now global. As a home-based business owner sitting here in my home office in Las Vegas, Nevada, I can talk to a guy in Fresno, California just as easily as I could talk to someone sitting right here next to me. And it's an amazing opportunity for everybody to have that technology available. And it's cheap now. It is so cheap, it's ridiculous. So, Paul, really what you're in saying is everybody should have a home business. Well, <laughs> It, it always comes down to that in the end, doesn't it? It always comes down Absolutely. to that. Uh, yeah. Maury and I were talking about that earlier. It's just, it is crazy for you. One of my employees, as a matter of fact, he's, the mentality sometimes just drives me nuts. He, he basically wanted to know how he could get more money back at the end of the year on his taxes. <clears throat> if you're watching this, you are focusing on the wrong things if that's what your focus is, is to get more money back on your taxes. You should not be using that as a savings account. If you're getting, you know, I see people go, I got $3,000 back in my taxes last year. That's not a good thing. That means that you loaned the government your money for the entire year. You loaned them $3,000 for free. free. <laughs> for free, right? They didn't pay you anything on top. It's It's crazy. That should not be what you're focusing on, folks. You should be kind of focusing on, one, either being dead even, or if you're getting money back because you just started your home-based business, okay, I'll give you that one. It's your first year. You're not making any money, so you got a refund. Cool. You should not be having money taken out or extra money. I love that go, yeah, I have extra money taken out of my check every single month so that I get it back at the end of the year. That is crazy. You should be having it in some kind of, interest 
you know, bearing account or something, but you should not be loaning your tax money to the government. They don't need your help. Trust me. They should on that be one. taking that money so, and investing it in gold and silver is what they should be doing. Just gold saying. Gold and silver is a good spot. <laughs> it, absolutely. <laughs> But what Lori told him is the same thing. You should not be focusing on that. If you want to get more money, don't worry about – actually, he was asking how to change his W-4 so he could get more back. And we said, no, 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 your, your focus should be on what kind of home-based business could you start, something simple out of your home so that you can use the tax advantages like we, we've talked about in, in past shows and we'll talk about again in future shows. How can I use those tax advantages to to my uh, to my advantage so yes everybody that can see this and everybody on the planet should because it doesn't matter if you're here in the US or in Mexico or Canada or Australia there's there's law those tax laws and laws are always written to uh, to benefit the, the business owner so yes everybody on the planet Absolutely. should yeah. be operating some kind of of home-based business out of their home and take advantage of this this interconnectivity this connected globe globalization that we that we that we have available to us it's it's phenomenal it's awesome so I understand you could not find us a Jim Rohn quote today is that my understanding <laughs> well yeah I, I couldn't actually that that kind of tied did we into find this. one from anybody does any I guess globalization is kind of a new thing so it's not like you can you know it's not like a, these older guys would even Jim Rohn, I'm sure, wasn't a big internet guy. Yeah, probably, probably not. I mean, it was probably just getting started, you know. <laughs> right, so. right, cool, cool. Well, I have ranted and raved like a lunatic long enough. It is uh, just past the half hour at seven thirty or so, seven thirty-two, and that's all I've got, Rod. I'm, uh, I'm done. You're Paul done. Sharon from Las Vegas. I'm I'm done for the day. So uh, if you want to take us out of here, yep. And this is uh this is the evening buzz this Friday. So uh, we will see you on That's Sunday. Right. What's that? That's right. This is the last show of the week. Woo! <laughs> so um, we will be back on the air on Sunday, and we are going to do a live presentation on how to get your blog installed and set up in 30 minutes guaranteed <laughs> Paul doesn't Absolutely. think I Paul doesn't think I can do it but I know I now, can. guys gals you got to be there to this if you're looking to set up a blog if you ha if you're not online yet and, and doing a blog and you've got a home based business you should be and Sunday night Rod is going to walk you from through from are, are you going to do the buying of the name as well, or are we going to are we going to already have that? Um, we're going to already have the name, but uh, I might I might take them through buying one anyway. But we won't use the one we're going to buy just because it sometimes takes a little bit to for DNS to to you right, know populate right, right. through the internet. So you get everything linked up, absolutely. So the barring the name, guys, which is really an easy thing to do, he'll walk you through. Getting that name hooked up to your uh, to your WordPress or getting WordPress installed on your hosting, getting your name connected to that, getting it set up, and getting your basic blog up and running in under 30 minutes, and show you just how easy it is. It's really really pretty cool, and uh, I'm gonna have the old clock on ticking and see if he can <laughs> pull that off. He could probably actually do it in 15 minutes, but we'll we'll drag it out to the third. But yeah, I could probably do it in 15 minutes if uh, you know Paul always likes to interrupt me and try to get me off and ramble a little bit, and you know, you know how he is. You guys have been on here long enough, so anyway, um, Rod Davison from Fresno, California, uh, the Evening Buzz. We'll see you back on Sunday. Um, Connect with us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash the evening buzz, or you can get to it at the evening And uh, the blog that we're going to build, which is really going to be a training site, is going to be the evening buzz training.com. So that's the uh, that's that is the site that we're going to use to build our website on Sunday. So we will see you guys Sunday. Have a great evening. <laughs>